Welcome to the Words That Change Lives podcast, helping leaders, coaches, and small business owners to 10 times the impact of their message. Join us as we delve into the art of powerful language, enabling you to speak with unwavering honesty, communicate authentically, and create a lasting impression with every word. I used to be terrible at handling criticism. In my growing years, I was, I still am, an emotionally sensitive person and took things quite personally. So on one hand, I was, you know, really did stuff with with feedback, but on the other, I really didn't like receiving it and would have quite an emotional response about it. And one particular memory I have from being in sixth form (laughs) was when I was doing my A-level theatre studies and the lady, the, the director of the play that we were doing, gave me some feedback. And it was quite criticising, but only in the normal context of that feedback. And oh my gosh, I remember my reaction. I, it was like a red hot poker was stabbed inside me and the response was just so inappropriate. I was angry, I was upset and she had to talk to me afterwards. And of course, I was, what, 17 then? And over the years, I've really grown to understand how to receive criticism and how to respond to it. And that's what this episode is about today, because normally I talk about how to communicate, and this is about communicating. This is about how responding to negative feedback or words that you don't necessarily want to hear is absolutely crucial to your growth. Whether you are a entrepreneur, whether you're a small business owner, a leader, you've probably encountered your fair share of criticism. It might be from a client who didn't get the results they expected. It could be from a peer or a manager offering feedback in the workplace, or maybe you have encountered the dreaded trolls online through social media. And the challenge is that it can feel deeply personal. It can trigger strong emotions like rejection or frustration, but it's also a powerful opportunity for growth when handled effectively. So, Today, I'm going to cover why criticism exists, how we naturally react to it, and I'm going to give you some strategies you can use to turn your criticism into a constructive tool for growth. And I'm going to do that through two practical models, the AAA model and the BIFF model. So that's going to help you handle criticism in a way that's productive and positive. But first, we do need to understand about the different types and why they exist in a modern world. Well, firstly, if you have clients, if you have a service-based business, you have likely encountered customers or clients who didn't get the results they wanted. They may have said things like, I didn't see the value in this course or this product didn't meet my expectations. And often this criticism stems from an unmet expectation or an unmet need, perhaps. And in the workplace, criticism can come for leaders from peers, stakeholders or managers, either through the performance management review or through day-to-day feedback in meetings, briefings, one-to-one situations. It can challenge your leadership style, communication or decisions, and it can affect how you show up. Then we have the criticism that has taken a new form in the digital age. People are more vocal than ever, especially behind the anonymity of social media and public facing businesses, they often face criticism about their product services or even personal appearance and values, which is awful, but I see it happen all the time and I've had it happen to me. And it's just a reality that we must face if you have any type of shop front on social media, if you are a brand and you're showing up in any kind of way, it's just to be expected now that you're going to get criticism. But there's a natural defense mechanism when we see receive criticism because it can trigger our fight flight or freeze response our brains perceive criticism as a potential threat to our self-image or identity and of course back when you know thousands of years ago when we were roaming the savannah that threat was real and so we are perceiving that same similar threat now that we would have done back then. We've still got the same brains and nervous systems as we did back then. So we perceive this as a threat. 
But let's give a modern day example. So let's say you're a business owner and a customer emails you saying, I didn't like this product. It's a waste of money. And your immediate reaction might be either to defend yourself, fight, avoid the situation entirely, flight, or feel unsure how to respond, freeze. Now, in my experience, I've kind of swung from my natural response being flight and freeze to fight in recent years. Interesting how that has changed. It's still something that I need to work on, though, because fight response is not a measured response, right? We're we're coming from a different place in our brains there and our emotional systems. So criticism often feels like rejection and we might feel like it's a reflection of our abilities or worth, especially when it conflicts with how we see ourselves. We might not agree and we might think, well, hang on a minute, that's not how I see it. So another example is a leader might receive feedback that their communication style needs improvement, but they see themselves as a great communicator. And this creates cognitive dissonance where feedback clashes with your self-image and can trigger feelings of inadequacy or frustration. I'm sure you can relate to both of those responses, those human responses to criticism. We've got the fight, flight or freeze, and we've got this cognitive dissonance where it's kind of, kind of clashes, it's it's misaligned with how you see yourself. And, and then that makes you feel less than, unworthy or, you know, just plain frustrated. I'm sure you can relate to this at one point in another, at one point on your career or business journey that you may have felt like this. And that's perfectly normal. You are a human and you are beautiful at that. But what we can do is we can turn this criticism into growth. We can shift perspective. So the first key to handling criticism is by viewing it as an, instead of an attack on your character, you think of it as feedback. It's just information you can use to improve. So it's almost kind of sidestepping the emotion, removing the emotion from it. I know it's hard, but it can be done, I promise you. So for example, if a client says, this isn't what I expected, I wasted my time, you might feel defensive. But instead of reacting emotionally, you can reframe it by asking What can I learn from this feedback to improve my product or how I communicate its value? It's always an opportunity to learn. You can ask that question back at the person who's given you that feedback. So the reframing strategy is every time you receive criticism, you can ask yourself, what's the feedback here and how can I use it to improve? Another strategy really is empathy and understanding. So empathy works because criticism often comes from a place of frustration or an unmet expectation or need. So if you can empathize with the person offering the feedback, it becomes easier to address their concerns without taking it personally. So, for example, a team member might say, you never listen to us and your decisions are out of touch. Instead of defending your decisions, you could respond with empathy. And that's by putting yourself in in the other person's shoes. You can say, I can see that you're frustrated. Can you help me understand more about how you feel unheard? Boom. (laughs) I know it sounds simple, but if just honestly, if you just try this, I promise you it's freeing. I do this, you know, I'm doing this every day. I'm working on myself every day. I I have not got this nailed Anybody that says that they have is is lying because we have such a strong intrinsic system of defense for our survival, right? But we can override that. We can. So by stepping into their shoes, you open the door to constructive dialogue, which allows you to address the root of the criticism rather than the surface frustration. Now I'm going to share with you a couple of models. So we've got the AAA model. And this stands for acknowledge, assess and act. And it's a powerful way to respond to criticism constructively. So I'm going to walk you through it with a detailed example. So let's think of a scenario here. Um, We've got uh, a client emailing you saying, I didn't get the results I expected from your online course and I feel like I wasted my time. So the first thing to do is to acknowledge this criticism, this feedback, this feedback, right? So you respond, thank you for sharing your feedback. I understand how disappointing it can be when you don't see the results you were hoping for and I appreciate you reaching out. 
Why that works is because acknowledging the criticism shows the person that you're listening and that their feedback is valued and it also helps diffuse tension. Classic example, I had a situation with one of my subscriptions at the weekend, one of my uh, online tech subscriptions. It's a platform that provides a service for me like landing pages and things like that. I had added a new user and it automatically charged me for a new user, even though I thought that that was part of the subscription. And they didn't even tell me that they were charging me. So I contacted the customer services and said, why has this happened? Their response was, you know, thank you for sharing this. We understand how frustrating it can be. And we don't we certainly don't want to dupe you. It was actually listed in the bottom left hand corner here. I mean, in very, very tiny writing. But we understand how that could be missed. Now, that did immediately diffuse me because it's also diffuse, diffuses you and the other person, you know, like it's it's really important step because acknowledging it, it shows them you're listening and that their feedback is valued. Step two is to assess. So you might say, can you share more about which parts of the course didn't meet your expectations? I'd love to better understand where it fell short for you. Why that works is asking for specifics allows you to assess whether the feedback is constructive or if it's based on misaligned expectations. It also prevents you from jumping to conclusions and defending yourself straight away when something went wrong. And then the third step is to act. So based on what you shared, it sounds like the course content wasn't as advanced as you were expecting. I'll review this for future updates. And in the meantime, I'd like to offer you a free one-to-one -one session to make sure you get more value from the program. So you've acted on that feedback. And again, we're changing the word criticism to feedback, whether by improving your product or offering a resolution so that you're committed to growth. So even if the feedback is difficult to hear, taking constructive action turns a negative situation into a positive one. So with this, there's some kind of caveats. One thing that's really key is separating emotion from facts. Now, as a highly emotional person, which I am, I mean, I don't know if you believe in star signs and things like that, but I'm Pisces and apparently Pisces are quite emotional. I've really learned to measure this over the years. I'm certainly nowhere near as reactive emotionally as I used to be. I am so much more measured, but still it does rear up from time to time. Separating emotion from facts is so helpful. So, you know, not all criticism is helpful or constructive. So some people criticise out of frustration or emotional venting. And it's important to separate these emotional reactions from actionable feedback. So, a bit of an extreme example here. If a client says, you're the worst coach I've ever worked with, that's emotionally venting rather than useful feedback. So you can take a moment to reflect before deciding how to respond and focus on only actionable points, if any. Also, the power of the pause. Pausing, reflecting massively gives yourself time to process before responding. This can prevent knee-jerk reactions that might escalate the situation. So after receiving a harsh review online, for example, Take 24 hours to reflect before crafting a calm, composed response. Time is everything when you're receiving any type of feedback that you might not like, that might be deemed as negative. There's also a really good model which helps remembering how to respond to criticism. It's called the BIFF model. So say, for example, if you received a harsh comment on social media about a new policy you might have introduced in your company, this policy is ridiculous and shows how out of touch you are. You should step down. What you need to do is put B-I-F-F -F in place. Brief. Your response needs to be brief. Thanks for your feedback. Informative. The response should be, the policy was implemented after consulting several teams and reviewing industry standards. It's designed to provide more flexibility for our staff. Friendly. I understand it might not be ideal for everyone and I'm open to hearing further feedback. But firm. The policy will remain for now, but we'll review its impact and adjust where necessary. So this is a really good thing if you are responding to stuff on social media. A lot of people say, ignore the trolls. However, I think with some comments, you know, if there's anything personal about your appearance, anything like that, you just, you just ignore them. But if it's something to do with, you know, say, if you're a leader of a company or it's something to do with a policy or it's something to do with feedback about your services in any particular way, then a response is, is definitely needed. And this little model here is great for that. Brief, thanks for your feedback. Informative, give some information. Friendly, 
keep things open and firm. We're, we're, sti- we're sticking with things for now, but we may adjust in the future. Really, really helpful. So I think in conclusion here, you know, criticism, I certainly have felt it as personal. And over the years, it's definitely something I've worked on continuously. Always a journey, not a destination. But it's really important to be able to receive feedback. Let's reframe that for our chance for growth. So to be able to shift our perspective, practicing empathy, using these models like AAA or BIFF, you can turn criticism into an opportunity for improvement. That mindset shift is huge and I promise you it will take you far. So I really encourage you to reflect on the last piece of criticism you received. How did you respond? And with this information, how might you handle it differently using the strategies we've discussed today? Get in touch and let me know. Thanks for listening to Words That Change Lives. Please rate, review and follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It really means the world and helps me to reach more people so that we can all harness the power of our words and change lives for the better.